On today's episode, I'm gonna show you seven of my favorite pedal stacking combinations. I got a new pedal in from a friend and it is the Golden Fleece by Mythos Pedals. I first heard of these from my friend Sean Brock, who I did an episode with. Some of you guys have probably seen that. He's a chef in Nashville. We go to his house and look at all of his gear and talk about food and guitar. It's great. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But he had one of these on the board and I played it and I fell in love with it. So I met Zach of Mythos at Winter Nam and he sent me this and I'm really excited to try it out and try it in live settings and actually get to know it. Him and his wife Morgan build everything in Nashville. Just a great company. I want you to go to their website and check it out. I think you won't regret grabbing anything that he makes. There are endless ways to stack guitar pedals, literally. You could spend the rest of your life trying combinations. That's part of the fun of it. What I'm gonna show you today is what I personally have done for a long time. So these aren't hard, fast rules. These are just things that I stumbled into, things that I was inspired to do by artists that I love, and that's what I'm sharing. So a lot of you guys will have some other techniques and other methods, drop those in the comments below. But right now let's get started the first and most important stacking method that i use and have always used is taking a light gain overdrive like the morning glory the reason i use this is because i like not having my first stage overdrive have any mid peak in it so this is considered transparent meaning bass mid and treble are even across the board and i set this pedal to a light breakup and i really never turn it off pretty much so it's always on light breakup and it's just stage one overdrive. So that's number one. Some good alternatives to a Morning Glory, which is a blues breaker style circuit, would be something like Paul Cochran's Timmy and the RC Booster by Exotic. These are great transparent pedals that don't color your sound. Now here's the trick. You take that first stage that's clean, transparent, no mids, and add something with a ton of mids. Some people use a Tube Screamer. Now, this is obvious because companies like me made a double barrel that has the Morning Glory and a Tube Screamer. You have all kinds of people doing that kind of thing nowadays. So you can use a Tube Screamer, but I personally use a Klon Centaur. Now, I don't use this one because I don't want it to get stolen. So what's on my board right now is a KTR. There are some other options that are affordable and awesome. The Tumnus by Wampler. We also have the Archer by Rocket Pedals and Mojo Hand makes a pedal called the Sacred Cow. All of these are great versions of this, and for what I'm using it for, you can't tell a difference. The reason this is cool, and the reason you should try it, is turn the drive knob up. Everyone gets a Klon because it's mystical and hard to get, and they use it as a boost, a clean boost. I don't understand that. I hate it as a clean boost, so I crank the drive knob up to 75%. I put the treble, the tone control, at noon, and then I adjust the volume accordingly, and I have a beautiful first stage breakup that's transparent, and then I can stack this on it and get a heavy mid-range boosted overdrive that's rich, it's thick, it works great on any pickup, neck, bridge, or middle, and I can't say enough about it. If you have this setup, try it, and also get a Klon and try it as a heavy overdrive. Not enough people do it, and I think you'll be really surprised.
Next up is to take two boost pedals, doesn't matter what they are, and combine them. It's a type of DIY overdrive. What a lot of you guys might not realize is that some overdrive circuits are simply gain stages cascading into each other. And in a sense, this will do the same thing, but you get infinite tweakability because you could try this boost here, this one there, there's so many. In this room, I could have taken one of any 40 boosts and put it somewhere in this two pedal setup and change the entire overdrive sound. For this setup, we're gonna use the Zvex Super Hard On and the Earthquaker Arrows. Now, this is gonna be first, and this knob, when they're both on, will act like an overdrive knob or a distortion knob, because if this one's on, that knob's gonna become a master volume. You'll see what I mean when I hook it up, and if you try this, you'll be really, really surprised. It's fantastic and infinitely tweakable and great for people who like different style of overdrive sounds and you really wanna try something outside the box of Tube Screamers. So this is cool. Some people make two-in-ones like this. Uh, Zvex actually has two of this in one case for this reason. And I even made a pedal. It's called the Kirkland Signature Boost. John Mayer's had it on his board. I get asked about it a bunch. And it's essentially this setup in one case. It's really fun, really cool. And I think a lot of you guys would love this. a fun one it's where you take two delay pedals you sync them together and you let one run quarter notes and the one after it run dotted eighth notes now this is big you know guys like the edge of YouTube have done stuff like this for years I prefer an analog delay as the quarter note up front and then I like a nice digital delay um, after that I'm gonna use the Walrus ARP 87s Panther Cub obviously so they're gonna combine and you're gonna hear the quarter note hit the dotted eighth and it's gonna do this da 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 da, like a rhythmic punch into each other. It's really, really fantastic. And these both have tap tempo. I feel like that's necessary because I can chain these together. This has an external tap jack, this does as well. So you're gonna see me play this and I'm, they're gonna be syncopated. So when I tap the tempo on one, both of them sync up. So quarter notes into dotted eights, really, really awesome. This next one has been around for a while, much longer than people were ever stacking pedals. It kind of started through guitar amplifiers. So with an example of a Blackface 65 Princeton, you see a reverb and tremolo. Now what's particularly interesting is that in an amplifier like this, the tremolo is after the reverb, but you have people, even me, telling you to put your tremolo after your drives and before your delays and reverbs. That is a rule, but I like to break that rule, and I typically break that rule every time I combine trim and reverb. So just like this amp, 
The reverb is before the trim. That's what you need to try. Now what I like to do is take a big, huge ambient reverb. And for this example, I'm gonna use the old Blood Noise Dark Star. It does some crazy stuff, uh, but I'm gonna just set it as a big ambient wash. And then I'm gonna take a Kodiak tremolo and I'm just gonna let it pulse and trim the decay of the reverb and the clean signal. It's really beautiful, it's awesome for clean tones, and it's something that you absolutely have to try. Trim and reverb, they're like peanut butter and jelly. fuzz stacked into an overdrive pedal. Now, this one is really cool, and in some cases it's almost necessary. Specifically, what I wanna go over is the sound of a big muff and putting that into a tube screamer. So, now this is a White Elk by Ren and Cuff. It's a really cool version of a weird big muff that existed back in the day. So, the thing with the big muff is that it doesn't have any mid frequency peak at all. It kind of has a scoop. And a lot of people complain that, you know, I turn my big muff on, we're in a band setting, and I disappear out of the mix because mids are super important to be in that mix and make you stand out. So to fix that problem, you need to add a tube screamer. So big muff into a tube screamer. This is the Jam Tube Dreamer, really a great version of a screamer. Any of them will work. So fix this up so you get a lot of the mids. Turn the drive down low. You don't need any more distortion. This has plenty. Turn the volume up, turn the treble up so the mids come up a little bit with the treble. And when you stack them, this suddenly peeks its head out. It's rich, it's thick, it's all the things you love about the Big Muff, but it's just stronger and better. It's a really good combo. you guys have figured out I'm a big fan of ambient clean guitar tones so this is one of those tricks that I use to achieve that all the time. I take a delay, any delay will work, this is a Diamond Memory Lane Junior and I set it to a faint but almost strong, hard to explain, you'll hear it in the example, quarter note echo. So I hit a note and then it bounces back slowly. A little bit of a longer delay time required in this so you want to kind of tap in the tempo one two, three, like that. So you have this repeat falling with the rhythm of how you're playing. And then add a modulated reverb. Now the RV5 is really, really great. It's on so many albums and so many great players still use this. Now, when you combine those, the quarter note delay into the modulated reverb, I think it's one of the best sounds out there. You gotta keep the modulation and the effect level of this kind of low. You don't wanna get all crazy and wash it out. But if you do it in a faint way, it's really, really special. And I think a lot of you guys would like it. There's a few pedals that'll do that right off the bat for you. The Caverns by Robert Keeley has a modulated verb setting and a delay. Also the Quiet Theory um, Prelude is a great pedal. It has both in there. You can get the modulated verb going. And the Dispatch Master doesn't say it has modulated verb, but I swear it's there. And it's a really simple pedal to use. You could kind of have it on your board and just have a setting that you use. I've often used this for big ambient slide parts with overdrive and just I have a knob setting that works great. So you might want to check those out as well.
The last combination may be the best because it's the loudest. It's the most rambunctious. It's the one that'll really frustrate your neighbors and make everyone in your house kind of hate you. But that's why we play guitar, you know, to be heard. And I think this is gonna help you be heard. You ready? I'm ready, here it is. Take an octave pedal, like the Micropog. Um, there's some other good options. The OT10 octave by Ibanez. You've seen me use this in a video. I like the OC2 by um, Boss. I actually like octaves that are a little more glitchy, that don't track as well. This one tracks pretty well, but feel free to use one that's technically bad. It might sound really good. So you take it and you put it before a fuzz, a big fuzz pedal. This one's physically big. This is the Death by Audio Fuzz War, and uh, it sounds as big as the case is. I mean, the case is bigger than my head. Look at that, I'm eclipsed by fuzz. Look at that. Anyway, octave into the fuzz. I set the octave up with about 50% dry signal, if you have that option. A lot of sub, so like 75% sub octave and a little bit of high octave, which kind of replicates the OT10 setting. A whammy works well for this as well if you want to. It's super glitchy and really fun. And MXR makes this sub machine, which you can kind of do the same thing with. Really fun. And there's also the MXR blue box. So anyway, you ready? Here we go. Before I completely wrap up, I want to show you a few more options for pedals that have some of these multiple effects already in them, kind of a two-in-one thing. So for the verb and trim, the flint is really great. It's honestly like a modern staple. This is on like so many boards for a reason. It has a lot of good verbs, big and ambient or spring, and you can add in the trim. So check that out. Now on the delay thing, you saw me sync two delays, but there are a lot of pedals out there that have that built in. Things like the DD500 from Boss, you're gonna see settings in there where you can have dual delays. The Eventide H9, this is actually a pedal that's on my personal board. I use it as a catch-all for a lot of different effects, but it has settings and algorithms in it that let you kind of stack multiple delays, really useful. And then of course, any of the new fancy line six stuff like HX effects, this has gobs of delay options and definitely um, you're gonna find that in there. So you may already own something that does all this. Don't feel the need to run out and buy something. Just be sure that if you're using a multi effect delay or reverb that it doesn't already have that. Um, overdrive pedals, just some really good options. I brought this up, this is great. You know, the Morning Glory and the Screamer, it's the double barrel. Um, the Brown Amplification Protein has a Blues Breaker style circuit similar to the Morning Glory into a Nobles style circuit, which is a type of Screamer clone. It's in that land, so it's a really good option. Um, the Pearl by This One's Mine, this pedal's really cool. Um, you can find them if you look, you know, they're on reverb and stuff, or you can get a hold of him. This has the ability to do that. The old classic Jekyll and Hyde, it has some of those stacking possibilities. Um, you can make the screamer side of this, uh, you know, a, a cleaner and get kind of a transparent sound. And then this side definitely has heavy mids. And another really affordable pedal that people just look over is the Full Tone GT500. You can buy these maybe for like $50 to $75, I believe. 
It's a great two-in-one. And like my double barrel or some of these others, you have an order toggle. So you can choose which side comes first. So check those out. And most of all, just get your pedal board and start stacking stuff. Have fun, change the order, try some things out, and I'm positive you'll find something creative that you never found before. Today's record time is brought to you by Pete Yorn's Back and Forth. This is produced by Rick Rubin. It came out in 2009 and it's absolutely in my top 50 albums ever. I love Pete Yorn as a writer. I love his lyrics. I love how he blends acoustic and electric guitar parts so well. It's just a great record and I can't recommend it enough. And I wanna challenge you to go listen to Social Development Dance and tell me you don't like it. I dare you. It's just a good song. You have to like it. So what I want you to do in those comments is tell me about a record that's around 10 years old, a decade old that you loved and you still love. And go listen to this if you haven't and let me know what you think about it. Thanks for watching this episode. I would love for you in the comments below to tell me what your favorite stacking combinations are. I wanna hear them all. I wanna hear how you first used them, who told you about them, and why you do them. If you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and also there's a bell icon. Click that and you'll get notifications of all future episodes. Until next time, have a great day.